A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. Having been at the speedrun and no damage grind for a very long time, I want to maximize my energy levels as much as possible and keep my brain working at max capacity for as many hours of the day as I can. Even with proper sleep and ramping up my exercise, it's very tough to keep my energy levels up and keep my focus, especially when I'm in the middle of a run. I almost exclusively drink water for most of my day, and if I want to eat a snack in the middle of the stream, I have to actively stop what I'm doing in order to eat it. Fortunately, Beast Coast and myself are now sponsored by Control. Control's founders are all gaming and esports, and their brand's mission is to give gamers a healthier option to much of the other crap that all you gamers out there might be putting in your systems. I've been drinking Control's meal replacement shakes, which are a fantastic option for anyone looking to eat healthier. And with only one gram of sugar per serving, they're even fine to consume if you're trying to lose weight alongside an existing exercise regimen. They've got 23 grams of protein, which is a great supplement for post-workout, 22 vitamins and minerals, 8 grams of fiber, 230 calories, and for the more sedentary parts of your day, it'll keep your brain going for 3 hours. A fantastic bridge to your next meal. Worrying about the taste? Don't. The flavoring and one gram of sugar content is literally inclusions of cereal pieces and bits of well-known snacks and cereals. With flavors like cookies and cream and apple smacks. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You just mix it and shake it up with some oat milk and it tastes and goes down just like cereal milk. Alternatively, if you're looking for something a little more solid, you can also check out their snack offerings, including protein cookie. And you get a cookie, and you get a cookie, and you get a cookie, and you get a cookie! Just... I've been enjoying its benefits quite a lot. You can give it a try yourself at drinkctrl.com forward slash carsey and use code carsey at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. You can also use their bundle builder linked directly on their homepage banner to get a discount of up to 20% off with the purchase of four or more products. Lastly, it's also available for sale at GNC if you're one of those people who prefers to do their shopping in person. If you pick some up, let me know how it goes. Enjoy the show. This video's content has been slightly modified from its original format to comply with the requirements of YouTube's ad policy. Early ad-free access to original uncut versions of all my videos can be found on my Patreon for as little as $1 per month. Please check out the pinned comment in the comment section below for a link to my Patreon. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Hello everyone, this is a no damage playthrough of Dead Space 2 on Zealot difficulty. Look at the time difference. Oh, I'll call no, you back okay. later. It's okay. <clears throat> How you doing? Good. You're right, Isaac. The Ishmer is a great ship. I am so lucky to be serving aboard her. Enjoy it while it lasts. You know they're gonna decommission her next year. Isaac. Thank you. For what? For just pushing me to do this. I mean, if it weren't for you, I never would have made it this far because you made me stick with it. I'll just remember, I'm giving you up for six months so you can do this. You know what, we must be getting an arranged thing, Isaac. Isaac, can you hear me? I'm gonna call you back as soon as I can, okay? Isaac. Isaac! 
You were drifting away for a moment there, Mr. Clark. I believe you were telling me about your nightmares that you've been having. About your dead girlfriend. What was her name? Nicole. I didn't want it to end like this. I really wanted to see you again. Just once. I loved you. I always loved you. Yes. Nicole Brennan. She was a senior medical officer stationed aboard a Planet Cracker-class vessel. Ishimura. USG Ishimura, yes. Part of a mining operation on Aegis 7. I understand communications went down shortly after their arrival. You were part of the repair mission. A mission for which you volunteered, am I right? What did you find aboard that ship, Isaac? They found something. What did they find aboard the ship, Isaac? The marker. Did you have contact with this marker? It made you see things, didn't it? Things you didn't want to see. It spoke to me. What did it say, Isaac? What did it say to you, Isaac? Isaac! Isaac, can you hear me? Isaac. Isaac, can you hear me? Dana, I found Isaac Clark. Repeat, I have him. Great work, Franco. Be careful. He's been out a long time. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Good, good. Steady, steady, steady. We gotta get you out of this straitjacket. Where, where am I? All right, I, I know you're confused right now. I can explain everything, but you gotta trust me, okay? Listen, you're in terrible, terrible danger. <laughs> Damage is forced as part of the story, so it does not count. looking much better today, yes, don't you think? <laughs> it hurts. It still hurts. Yes, I'll schedule you for another session tomorrow. No, no, no I, I don't think I'm ready. I, I don't think I can take another session. I don't... There. First thing tomorrow. Now let's talk about what you saw today. Come on, Strauss. I'm here to help you. It was black. Deep black and glowing red with symbols. Symbols whispered to me. And what did the symbols whisper to you? Come on, Strauss. What? He was just sharp. He was just sharp, but I put so much stuff in my head, so much in my head. There's no more room for anything. I can't remember what he looks like. I can't remember what he looks like. The symbols, Strauss. What did the symbols tell you? They told me that it wasn't my fault. I didn't kill him. They didn't deserve this. And I didn't deserve this. 
Put Mr. Strauss back in stasis, adjust his medication up 30 milligrams, and we'll try another session first thing in the morning. Subject is Nolan Strauss, Sergeant 158. Come on, man. Before I remember you, <laughs> I even said we all the key subjects need to be eliminated, Listen. terminated. <laughs> Which one more? Listen to me, man. Will it matter? Listen to Will me. It matter? We can both get out of here. Just, just cut me out of the straitjacket. No one's getting out of here alive. Don't do it. There's no escaping from what I've done. <laughs> take it easy, buddy. <laughs> Just take it easy. The rig is red. It's red. It's a health pack and a flashlight in that wall locker. You should grab them. Go ahead. Take it. I won't be needing it anymore. Isaac, we're all gonna burn for what we did to you. Clark! Isaac Clark, is that you? Who are you? My name is Dana. I'm the one trying to rescue you. Why? What's going on? You're suffering from a unique form of dementia, Isaac. Something you contracted on age seven. How do you know that? How do you know all this about me? Your dementia will kill you. But if you can get here, I can treat you and get you to safety. Why should I trust you? Because I'm not the one shooting at you. Fuck. Just follow the route I'm sending you. So now that we have Kinesis, we have something to defend ourselves with. And for tutorial purposes, Kinesis Impalement is able to kill these Necromorphs in one shot. I don't actually know at which point the uh, Kinesis Impales stop killing them in one shot. It might be after you're actually able to upgrade your rig, perhaps. But you need to upgrade your rig after a certain point in order to be able to kill things with one impalement. 
But after a certain point, it's diminishing returns on ammo conservation and on uh, time to kill. So I wouldn't say that impalement is a uh, is something that you should really. How do I put this? I wouldn't say that it's something that you should really uh, that you should really hedge your ammo consumption on because on zealot difficulty you actually do get quite a bit of ammo <coughs> they give you exactly enough ammo to hang yourself with if you get too many guns Tissue laser? A plasma cutter? Oh my god! What the f are you doing? Help! I'm trying! I'm trying! I'm trying! Severing a necromorph's arms is generally going to be the quickest way to dispose of one. Or you can impale them twice. Actually, I think it's like right about here that uh, impaling necromorphs is starting to take uh, two impalements to actually kill. Once a necromorph is dead, you can use telekinesis to rip off a limb instantly. They're just like really ripping off their claws because yeah, you can rip off their claws and use them. You have to dismember the creatures to stop them. I know. I've had a lot of practice. Just try to stay in one piece. Thanks. Excuse me. Although I think the impalement might be different depending on the object. So after that sudden jump scare, I just went ahead and uh, dismembered that guy. And then chucked his claw back at him. Just sort of alternate between dismember throw, dismember throw basically, and uh, a lot of these early game necromorphs die pretty fast. I should also mention that uh, picking up a box and throwing it with TK is going to be faster Come on, right way. Way. than walking up to it and stomping it. After us? I usually have to retrain myself on that every time I start playing a Dead Space game again. Lockdown. I told you. 
told you to hurry. How'd you miss it? Look, I don't need your help. Fine. Let's see how long we last. So the way these guys spawn in depends on your positioning. There's two enemies that spawn in and then uh, several more enemies spawn from upstairs. They all come in through a vent. But where they come out depends on where you stand, so just be very vigilant about it. Once again, just... Uh, Shoot off an arm, throw a claw. Dana. Okay, you're right. I do need your help. Talk to me. Look, Isaac, we don't have to be friends. But like it or not, we're stuck together. Tideman's your enemy, not me. All right, I found you a new route. Fine. So where the hell am I? How did another Necromorph outbreak get started? You're on Titan Station orbiting Saturn. As for the outbreak... <laughs> You have to stun this guy before you can do anything else. Stun this guy and get rid of him. If you try to shoot him without stunning you, then he will absolutely obliterate you, so always go for that stasis. So here's our introduction to my most despised enemy in this game, which are the Spitters. Actually, they're not quite as despised as Leapers in this game. I think that they made Leapers miles worse in Dead Space 2. Although Spitters are very close because if you dismember a Spitter, then it shoots acid everywhere. And sometimes the acid can go through walls if your frame rate is above like 30 or something like that. <coughs> Fortunately, once they're completely dead, they stop spitting acid everywhere. Whenever you go to uh, stomp their bodies. There's also a power node right here. But yeah, I would say just uh, keep your distance as much as humanly possible while fighting spitters. What the f***? more power node behind this reception desk over here. So decompression rooms are a thing that's going to happen fairly often. Whenever you see those, you just shoot the red switch and... Tunnel breach rectified. A whole door installed on the exterior will uh, prevent any more air from escaping so you can proceed with the game. Although you can use it tactically to your advantage. You can use it to completely vacate a room of enemies. Welcome to Microstorm, CEC Engineer Isaac Clark. Updating inventory to CEC Engineering Loadout.
course, once we have the engineering suit, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sell all of my med kits. Because who needs those, am I right? Use telekinesis to grab one more power node from outside. So this room is going to be our first encounter with a, uh, I actually don't know what these guys are called, but perhaps someone in chat can help me. These guys are big, just uh, backpedal and try to hit them with the Kinesis and hopefully the Kinesis will actually hit them. not, just run around in a circle, try to hit that stasis recharge, and uh, once we hit the stasis recharge, turn around, stasis again, so that we can get some distance. Try to stay around the uh, column in the center, because if you try to hide behind the smaller columns, this uh, big dude can tear them down. I've heard some people call them tripods, so I'm just going to call them tripods, because it kind of makes sense. So once we disable, uh, once we dismember both of their limbs, we got to use Kinesis in order to get the uh, semiconductor that they drop. Dana, I'm out of the hospital. Okay, the tram station is- If you don't use semicon- I need more answers. How long have I been here? Three years. Tideman found you floating in space near Aegis 7 and brought you here for study. Why can't I remember anything? The marker you found imprinted your brain with a self-replicating signal. The longer you're awake, the more the signal spreads. It's killing you, Isaac. Tyvan tried to keep it in check with memory suppressants. You said you could fix it, right? Only if you reach me in time. Tram station, get moving. Yeah, so those guys, uh... Well, rather, that particular one has, like, a uh, final attack jump scare. So you gotta use TK in order to get the semiconductor. If you don't, then it's uh, final attack jump scare will hit you and it will hurt you. For like one HP, but damage is damage. And that damage is completely avoidable. I actually have gotten confirmation that those are in fact called tripods. So there we go. sell that gold semiconductor that we just got for 3,000 and then we can pick up the line gun although really you should pick up the javelin instead that's what I would actually recommend is picking up the javelin instead the javelin is a far superior gun and if I could do this run over again I suppose I will someday then I would recommend picking up the Javelin, but uh, the line gun is still pretty good. Caution. So a word of warning on these female Necromorphs here. These female Necromorphs actually do have a long range spit attack. So be careful of them. Get ready to strafe around. There's a power node right there, which we will use to open this door. Come 
coming in here will get us another semiconductor as well as some text logs and some more resources. The plasma cutter in this game, uh, even on zealot difficulty, dismembers uh, necromorph arms in one shot. I think legs might take two shots. Oh, but we also got the schematic for power nodes, which is super important. It might also be more economical to wait until you get the, uh, the vintage suit so that you can, before you start buying uh, power nodes. That way you can get 10% off of all power nodes, and power nodes are going to be like one of the more plentiful things that you buy. So the very first thing that I start to upgrade in this game is actually the uh, stasis module, and the stasis recharge, just simply because we're going to be using it a crap ton. Attention, this is Director Clayman. Cannot recommend upgrading it enough. If you go ahead and shoot his arm off while he's climbing up, then it will completely kill him. I'm not leaving my mother! No! 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 Ignore that room over there, there's a necromorph in there. So either the left door or the right door will detonate and it will cause you one HP of damage. There's no way you can avoid that ever. So for these guys, what we're going to do is uh, hit him with the stasis and then use the alt fire on the line gun. So impaling the spitters also will prevent them from uh, spewing vomit everywhere. So keep that in mind. If your line gun also destroys the glass in this room, in this laundry room here, then you can actually use the, uh, the glass to impale enemies as well. At close quarters, impaling enemies is kind of tough, and you also got to keep in mind that the line gun has uh, blowback damage, so you got to stay out of the AOE. Don't go there. <laughs> Necromorphs everywhere. Is the entire sprawl infected? How'd this happen? The marker was destroyed, Dana. I destroyed it. You destroyed a marker, Isaac. Tyvon built another one. 
on this station? Why? It's powerful alien technology. Tideman wants that power. Get to the tram. It'll take you to the casino tower's currency. Dana? Damn it. get close to that door, Necromorph busts out left. Gun him down. Semiconductor to the left. Go ahead and dismember this guy from the start. You gotta really watch out for these leapers because once they leap, there is no stopping them. They just become a projectile and there's no way that you can avoid them. So you have to try to get rid of the leapers as quickly as possible. So, Sploters. I actually shot that Sploter at exactly the uh, at exactly the range where it was not going to kill me. If I was any closer, then it would have killed me. I would recommend getting rid of Sploters as quickly as possible. If they get too close, if you don't feel comfortable shooting them up close, then obviously you gotta dismember them. Like, for instance, that is way too close right there. But after I dismembered it, I could have, like, started targeting the, uh, things on the back. After this train goes bye-bye, we can, uh, collect the, uh, schematic for the stasis pack. And I took this uh, Sploder uh, sack with me so that whenever this door opens, I can throw the Sploder sack and kill this Infector and the uh, resulting enhanced Necromorph. Another Necromorph will spawn on the other side. So we're just going to go ahead and get the train going. I would actually say that it's easier to hit enemies with the plasma cutter as opposed to trying to hit them with impalement because the enemies move in very erratic ways. So sometimes even if you're aiming at center mass, then a severed claw, which functions as a projectile, meaning you have to lead your aim a little bit, is likely to miss. Yeah, I got way too close over here. I should have just I should have just did stasis and gone back into the other room. Or just like ran to the other side and impaled him. That would have been better. While Isaac is up on his Iron Man sh we're just going to uh, hold down here. So that these uh, flying doors over here will go right over us. There's a QTE. Who cares?
If you're lucky, then sometimes the Sploder and the female Necromorph there will be right next to one another, and you can blow them both up. There's one more over here, which uh, we're just gonna straight up shoot off while he's climbing in. He'll die instantly. This section over here is exceptionally vile. Probably would have been a lot easier with the javelin, I think. Any anyway, so this first uh, crawler over here comes out. We impale that one. We got two enemies over here. If you sever a leg, it'll probably make them easier to deal with. That Sploder definitely got too close for comfort. And after that we have a Brute, we just need to get rid of one of its limbs. It took me two shots. pleasant route that it'll get you to the Cassini Towers residential sector. Damn it! Tymon has your signal again. Who's moving? Okay. You're very important to the Isaac. Hold tight. I'll contact you soon. Don't forget the power node in this room as well. I wasn't using telekinesis here because uh, there were a lot of dead bodies around. And stomping would have been a little better targeted, I think. Uh, I also picked up the schematic for the pulse rifle, which uh, early on I thought I might need, but actually I didn't need it. Overall, I use uh, five guns for this entire playthrough. I'll explain which guns those are. Ignore this shadow over here. We're going to go directly to the left. There's another uh, power node. But we're also going to uh, launch a quick alt fire from the line gun here to uh, get rid of this enemy that's playing dead here. these kids over here. I would actually recommend using the uh, plasma pistol instead if you have the ammo. And also try to stomp them as you're going along because the bodies will disappear. I think you're still alive. We can't talk. I think we're tracking our signals. Are the memories coming back to you? They're coming back to me. The good ones. And the bad ones. The more I remember, the more my head hurts. I keep seeing the symbols. The symbols too, Isaac. And him. The 
keep seeing his face. Tell me. So as I mentioned before, I use a total of five different guns in this game. I use the plasma cutter, I use the line gun, I use the pulse rifle, I use the javelin, and I use the contact beam. I haven't really found any other uh, good uses for any of the other guns. But I would actually recommend buying as few guns as possible, because the way that the ammo drops work in this game... The way that the ammo drops work in this game... crazy guy that keeps contacting me. I saw him back at the hospital. Nolan Strauss. He was a patient in the project, just like you. Yeah? Well, why was he there? What does he want? He's a psychopath, Isaac. Stay clear of him. He murdered his own wife and child. Okay, I'll be careful. Right, the way the ammo drops work in this game... They're all randomized, but the game prioritizes the guns that you have in your inventory. So sometimes you might get a little bit of flamethrower fuel, or some ripper blades, or... You know, you might get a few uh, drops from guns that you do not have. But the recommendation is to um, always just keep as few guns in your inventory as possible because it'll prioritize the ones that you have. I never keep any more than three guns. Because if you have too many guns, then it limits the ammo that you have for the guns that are actually effective. I could have actually gone without the uh, without the uh, line gun and the pulse rifle completely. Although the pulse rifle is really good for just like small pokes. This looks like a unitology recruitment center. Am I still on track? Yes. There's an old maintenance access point in there that'll take you through the waste disposal system and into the Cassini towers. Stay sharp. So after blowing that up, we're just going to uh, seal the room again. Just gotta keep in mind, every time you see a... Uh, every time you see a floor-level glass window, especially one that talks about, like, uh, how they're going to expand the area, like a construction expansion, Shooting it will depressurize the room, and uh, you have to close the door. Make sure that you are far enough away whenever you do shoot it, because if you're too close, obviously you'll get sucked into oblivion. You get very, very few pulse rifle drops as well. So Pulse Rifle actually did get nerfed pretty bad between Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2. Uh, over here so that once we uh, flip this switch over here and spawn in these enemies we'll have those uh, we'll have those javelins there ready once again gotta max out the stasis module to upgrade the pulse rifle though uh, I recommend you wait until you're at zero bullets and then get a capacity upgrade it's pretty handy because you get a free ammo refill whenever you use a capacity upgrade so if you flip this switch we can walk down this way 
Spitter spawns in first. We'll use the Pulse Rifle to keep these guys at bay. And then Impale them. I always prioritize the Spitter just because the Spitter can be very, very unpredictable when it's up close. And then the Exploder there just uh, finished him off. Basically, this game has no chill. There's no, uh, there's no build-up to any enemies or anything like that. The enemies just spawn in and you have to kill them. I don't really think that this game is like a horror game. I think that it is more of a horde shooter than anything. One that requires a lot of forward knowledge to be efficient at. There we go. Got a uh, capacity upgrade. For the pulse rifle. Up to 75 from 40. Was it 30 or 40? Whatever, it doesn't matter. 75 bullets now. Less reloads. We go into this room, there's another power node here. Some goodies in the lockers. Doing a quick cursory glance to make sure there wasn't anything that I forgot. tunnel over here and look directly to the right. It's mostly just boxes in here. If there's no enemies in a given room, I try to pick up as many bobs and bits as I can. One enemy is going to spawn in from this uh, vent over here. Assail him, impale him with monster truck force. That shop there doesn't work. You're going to find a lot of broken shops in this game. to the left upon getting out of the elevator. Hard to miss. We're going to avoid everything else. Just go directly into this cutscene and keep going forward. I'm afraid I Of course, you can also knock an enemy over with a box. 
And while they're getting up, you can sever their limbs. Start by placing a line gun mine on that body because that infector is going to go in. And then another mine over there on uh, that spitter that comes out of there. And then I dismembered uh, the sploder and uh, used a sack against the other spitter that spawns down. The spitter could, the second spitter could spawn in one of these two vents, either by the entrance or by where that sploder came out. And then once we uh, take care of this last uh, necromorph that comes out of the vent, we have one more infector to deal with. And once you place that mine, if you happen to take too long and the uh, infector turns the, uh, turns the body into a necromorph, then you can get double prizes. It's pretty handy. It's Diamond! He's found you! Into the church! Hurry! Dana, the church of unitology? Why here? It's one of the few places on Titan Station that Tideman can't monitor. Separation of church and state. No, Dana, we shouldn't be in here. This is the last place we want to be right Isaac, now. Isaac! My brother died trying to rescue you. This will work. I'm in the safe room at the top of the church. I'll meet you there, okay? Isaac, can you see the tempest too? Yes, I see the suits. We are a threat to them. I know it. We have to work together. Work together? Who's them? Titan? Strauss. Or could be Strauss. Yeah, keep an eye out while you're grabbing the other power node in that other room. Stun. Line gun. Also getting rid of these uh, stasis packs here since my recharge is pretty good. Don't really need to abuse stasis until like pretty late in the game. A lot of these dead bodies here, uh, an infector will never get to them, so don't worry about it. You could just group them all up together and blow them up if you want to for fun. Alright, so once we come into this room, we got an infector. We're just going to uh, drop a mine on him, and we'll kill them all. And then another mine over here, and then another mine over there, because there's a third infector going over to that body. We uh, weren't able to get to that last infector in time, so had to stun it again and uh, use another mine. So there's uh, three infectors, and uh, I think I saw, what, two necromorphs? So as long as you don't take too long, that's all you will have to deal with. Of course I go and uh, try to stomp every body that I can, just to get some extra loot, bobs and bits, you know?
taking that power cell and putting it in over here. We just got to stand over here and three enemies will spawn in and we're just going to let them get sucked out into, into space. Shut the door. You have to hit the stasis on this thing while it is opening, not while it is closing. If you hit it while it's closing, then you fuck up the timing. Where are you going? You can't run from the pain forever. Can you beg for a way to end it all? We got the schematic for the security suit now as well, which uh, makes the pulse rifle slightly stronger. After this power node right in front of us. Break that fuse by punching it. That would send us into the uh, previous room which would allow us to backtrack. To go to the uh, store again. We're about to come up on our first encounter with uh, raptors as well. Which is what the javelins are especially good for, but uh, if you have stasis, I mean, the line gun works pretty good too. Also, getting rid of these seeker shells. Uh, for some reason, a bunch of people say that the seeker rifle is really good, but I actually haven't found an instance where I actually think the seeker rifle is you know, even remotely reasonable for anything. I just think that the contact beam and the javelin are far superior guns. Dana, I'm locked out. There's something in the church. It broke the door. Hang on. I'll try to override all the gates in the area. Hurry. There's something out here, too. It should be noted that once you go into the elevator, then it uh, causes all the raptors to uh, go into hiding. So you would have to do something to force them out again. So we gotta run around here, and once we start seeing them run around, then they're going to uh, basically lower these gates over here. And uh, I'm pretty sure you're completely safe if you stand in the elevator over here. Isaac! I don't think I can Not open now! Once you step over here, they'll come back out. So here's the uh, here's the trick to the raptors. We just gotta try to stay in one corner, just kinda stand your ground, right? Once we're over here, you can see one is looking around the corner to the right. Once they look around the corner, once you see them looking around the corner, keep looking, because then it's going to charge. And that is how you keep in control. Like this. Stun. One gun mine. But you can see, like, uh, the second I got back on the elevator... The second I got back on the elevator, the, uh... It actually, uh... Enacted, uh, another part of, like, the AI that basically just causes the, uh, enemies to like uh, go deeper into the room like if, if an enemy is in stasis and then you walk onto the elevator then they are no longer in stasis and they run away basically they're just there to keep you from cheesing or something like that it's just like a kind of cheese protection like that see so that's really annoying I had to discover that this attempt but now you know no longer where to stand. So first guy, we're not going to go back onto the elevator. If you 
find them getting too close, then uh, use another stasis and try again. But you have to fire off the line gun immediately. If you find that there are some that are uh, hiding in a place that's too close for comfort, then you can step back onto the elevator and try them again. It'll shuffle their uh, hiding spots. Just be very, very careful with the uh, stasis. Because you might think that the AoE is going to uh, actually affect them whenever you shoot the stasis at the ground, but sometimes it won't work. And you'll just like hit another object or hit the wall or something. Basically to this development team, hitboxes are just a suggestion. Hey, Isaac, I can't unlock the elevator. Can you do anything from your rent? Let me see what I can do. Okay, once you're through, you'll go through the funerary ring of the church and down into the crypt. It's very important you not the third. No, no, Earth Cup can't land it from here. Not in here. Data, data. Important that I want. I came back up here for a little bit while the dialogue was playing out, just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Cut across over here and uh, hack this elevator, hack the power on this elevator so that we can go up. another fuse we can knock out to go back to the store right over here I decided to upgrade the damage on my pulse rifle this time. I ended up respecting the pulse rifle later. I wanted to upgrade to the security suit so that I would get more inventory space.
another good use for the pulse rifle, but I actually think that it would still be better to use the uh, plasma cutter instead for these guys. Uh, these guys do like to hitch a ride on these uh, other necromorphs here. That guy got way too close, and uh, if you walk over to that direction, then you get another... Uh... Yeah, so that was actually really weird. The enemy just, just disappears. Because we just like hit a boundary where like enemies are apparently supposed to despawn or something, which is absolutely f stupid. I have no idea how that passed a bug test. For all the people that were QAing this game, I'm amazed that that like that that like slipped past. I actually think that that one is a pretty bad one. I was just trying to make more distance. Yeah, this whole area is bugged. What we're gonna do is just open, stun, mine. And this time we're gonna run to the right so that we don't uh, make that enemy disappear. But of course, after we blew him up, uh, the little boogers over here... The little boogers over here didn't go bye-bye. I suppose Force Gun might be good for the boogers, but not really much else. there is playing possum. My recommendation is to feed that guy a line gun mine. Ah, but see, there was a power node here that I completely missed. So after the uh, raptors are done and you go up the exit elevator, that power node is right there. I was checking against my list just to make sure that I got everything before ending the chapter because I didn't want to re-record this segment, so we'll chalk that up to a past Carsey moment.
Takes a uh, couple of rooms before we start to see enemies here. Be very, very careful when using the line gun against spitters like this. I was still sort of in my experimental phase for figuring out the best, most efficient way to deal with spitters, and uh, I can actually tell you bar none that the best way to deal with spitters is to use the javelin gun, or perhaps the contact beam. They are very much worth it, just because of how easy it is for them to get cheap hits everywhere. And especially because if they hit you, they can slow you down. Uh, their, um, their spit attacks actually do zero damage, and I do demonstrate this later. But, uh, I still try not to get hit by them. Oh yeah, no, I impaled him, uh, I impaled him twice. And he was up on his bullshit still. The way that, uh, enemy HP in this game works is, uh, dismembering an enemy takes off a lot of HP. I think disabling an arm might actually do more damage than, uh, disab- Or sorry, dismembering an arm might do more damage than anything else. One more spitter over here. And of course, because he's uh, really close and, you know, that corner that he just spawns in is just kind of difficult. I was able to pick him up with telekinesis. You cannot pick up a living enemy with telekinesis. So that's another good way of telling when an enemy is playing dead. If you end up ripping off an arm from uh, telekinesis, then that enemy is absolutely dead. Dana! I think I found the exit, but it's way above me. Gravity controls are locked out. Dana! There's a semiconductor in the center of this area here. Just uh, keep moving around and use telekinesis to grab it. Speaking of semiconductors, I do use nodes. You need to go up. You your hand You need to go up. There's another power node here also, and another schematic down here. I do use uh, nodes to open node doors depending on the contents. I actually looked online to see what the contents of each door was, and if it turns out that I use a power node and uh, I get less than... Uh, I get less than 10,000 credits worth of stuff, then going through a node door is not worth it. Going through a node door was pretty much never worth it in Dead Space 1. Aside from maybe some like files or something like that. On this third portion of the puzzle here, you do have to uh, use kinesis, or sorry, stasis on the uh, final portion of the puzzle. careful whenever you use uh, stasis because if a blade touches you it'll still kill you because of the way physics work in dead space for some reason is whenever you freeze something it still has all of its potential energy it's just it just somehow moves slower medium med pack schematic up here Exiting zero gravity. Isaac 
Damn it. I think they're jamming our signal with a mobile device. Someone get me the frequency on that jammer. They must have a gunship position near the compound. Now what? Change of plans? No. If they knew where we were, they would have killed us by now. Oh, signal fading. It should also be noted that uh, all the DLC guns will appear in your inventory, by the way, as of uh, 2023. I picked up the javelin gun now. As of 2023, because uh, you can no longer buy the DLC, they just decided to go ahead and give you the DLC guns. I forgot if it was like pre-order DLC or something like that. Anyway, so from here I start uh, upgrading the javelin gun. Although I definitely should have done it a lot earlier. A lot of goodies in here, including uh, 10,000 credits. Absolutely want that 10,000 credits. So it should be noted that the javelin gun actually does kill the uh, lurkers in one shot. Doing what I did here by dismembering the tentacles, you don't need to do that. You can actually just use these javelins here, but especially the javelin gun to kill them in one shot. Another necromorph spawn spawns around the corner. Spawns? <laughs> But yeah, you can impale him and uh, shoot off a limb, and that's more than enough. Also started getting contact energy. Tripods start spawning in. We just have to uh, shoot the. Uh... It has a baby on its tongue. Start shooting the baby. Alright, so what we're going to do, the second these children start spawning in, we're going to go over here. And you can also shoot the dead bodies. So that they spawn in more uh, items, especially as they, uh, especially as they despawn, because you can actually see them disappearing directly in front of you. The game just does that so that, uh, you know, it doesn't crash or nothing. But of course, like, letting them all crowd up and uh, taking them all out with the pulse rifle is uh, going to allow you to collect all of their items very quickly. Once you get rid of all the children, 
Uh, I would say it's actually uh, a lot safer to go up to that door at the top right there. That's our destination. There's nothing else really to collect in here. Just uh, go up and try to get going as quickly as possible. Because otherwise you're going to deal with a lot more enemies. Don't worry so much about saving ammo here. Just, uh, if you absolutely have to shoot anything else that spawns here, my recommendation is to get rid of that spitter over there. Also stun that uh, half a raptor that's left, and then we can go in here and uh, we're safe. When this guy pops in, just uh, use stasis immediately. Just plasma cutter those arms off, and uh, yeah, while we were picking up items, I mashed the button an additional time, and now we gotta wait for the elevator to go down. So one thing to note is, uh, if you have health items in your inventory, and your health is full, you can check to see if your health is full by trying to mash it. If the game doesn't let you use a health item, then that means that your health is full, so... Because I was not able to use a health item, it means that I still haven't taken any damage. And I especially didn't take any damage on the enemy that dropped down here, even though Isaac uh, was uh, forced to take a stun. goodies over here, power node here, another schematic here. For the detonator gun, useless. the pulse rifle for the QTE after this. Dana! You're a unitologist. Oh, of course you are. Why did I trust you? Well, you didn't have a choice, Isaac. I told you there was a cure and you came running. Why are you doing this? Why can't everyone just leave me alone, huh? You're a dangerous secret, Isaac. EarthGov won't leave you alone because they're afraid you'll destroy their marker. After all, you did build it. What are you talking about? Well, that's why we brought you here. To build markers for us. To spread glorious convergence to the entire galaxy. You people are unbelievable! Just give me the cure and let me go. No, we don't want to cure you, Isaac. We need that precious little head of yours just the way it is. Would you escort Isaac to the shuttle and put him in stasis? The last thing we want is for him to die.
throughout all that, you actually take zero damage. Just uh, shoot the yellow thing with the pulse rifle and you're good. Tear it down. What, you, you mean the marker? Do you know where the marker is, Tross? It, it's in the government sector. It's in the government sector, but we have to move now. Now, now, now. Because time is running out for moving for us. Tross! Tross, where are you going? There's a power node in this area before we go through this door. Make sure you watch out for it. We're back in the apartment complex that we were in earlier. There's the schematic for the Seeker Rifle, if for whatever reason you want to use it. But I actually think that the Seeker is a trash gun. Couple of thousand credits in this apartment. Shut up! They were afraid of us after the session. Uh, I remember. They took us to the machine for a session. For the steps. I don't remember any sessions. You're lucky you don't remember. When you do, he starts coming back. Who? Who comes back? Who? Look at you. You've grown up so much. What are you doing? Strauss, don't follow. He's not really there. Director Titan. All surviving squads are ordered to fall back. Repeat. Fall back. In the sector. Operation Endgame is in effect. Contingencies are in place for our lost assets. more enemies to deal with over here. Same room, funny enough. This is where we encounter the uh, pregnant necromorphs. If we shoot off their arms without shooting off any other part of their body, then we can stop them early. But uh, if you hit, if you hit the stomach at any point, and what'll happen is uh, they'll erupt and a uh, bunch of boogers will come out. So next I just uh, huddle up into a corner and use stasis and the pulse rifle to get rid of these guys and then I go into this room. And then I stand in this corner so that uh, these uh, so that these tumors over here they uh, they shoot and they kill themselves. If a tumor is on the floor, then you can have it uh, just just kill itself, basically. 
by just like walking close to it and walking away. We don't have to worry about any other enemies there because uh, they can't vent or anything. Let's use this uh, broom handle over here and impale that uh, impale that tumor right there. We can also throw objects to get them to uh, blow their load a little early. bench now we're going to upgrade the javelin gun again start working on that alt fire in here zero gravity jump up here and uh Drop over here. Pick up this power node from this uh, cabinet over here. And we'll drop down here and pull out all the batteries. We can just drop the batteries. And they'll just float around for a little bit. While we're holding this battery, we're going to wait for the air to go out, and that will kill the fire, and then we can put the battery back in. And uh, now we don't have to worry about uh, gasping for air or nothing like that. If for whatever reason the uh, lurkers don't die, then you can use the alt fire on the javelin. That'll take care of them. But we want to get the uh, alt fire on the javelin upgraded as quickly as possible because of the explosion effect. Because the explosion effect will be very, very good for instantly killing a lot of tougher enemies. gonna launch a uh, mine into this room as soon as the door opens and then we're going to duck over this way and we have to stay as far away as possible because like I said these enemies are glitched to hell so sometimes the uh, the residual spit acid puke whatever that comes out of them whenever they die will actually fly through the walls and hit you so just try to stay as far away as possible Force synergy, useless. Isaac, the steps. He wants me to follow the steps. Step one, crawl into the dark machine. Strauss, calm down. He can't hurt you. He wants me to go into the dark machine, Isaac. I can't go. She's in there. She's waiting for me. Strauss! Oh god, oh god, oh god. Strauss, listen to me. You need to keep moving. Can you get to the train? Can you do that? He's coming. Can't talk.
So once we come in here, there's uh, going to be some raptors that spawn in once we cross this line over here. Once we're done here, we can cross this line back closer to the stairs to uh, get them to shuffle their positions. Yeah, we can just walk that way in case one of them gets too close for comfort. But once one uh, just goes over there, we can just go ahead and launch a mine. Because they actually do take a little while before they uh, before they come out. So let's say like too many of them just like kind of crowd up on you. Just yeah, just use the mines. Like whenever you see uh, one jump in front of you to hide behind that crate on the right, you can just plant a mine and... Uh, they will take exactly that long before they can actually come out to hit you. Same with this guy. After the music stops, they're all gone. Uh, don't try to rush the door, by the way, because if you do, then you will spawn a spitter. So my recommendation is to just hide in that corner and take out all the raptors before you proceed. That should actually be your uh, default mode of operation when dealing with any room that has raptors in it. After we've looted all these bobs and bits, pack the door and proceed. Isaac, he's gone. Listen, the steps can destroy the marker. Step one, crawl into the dark machine. Step two, the screws go tight all around. I don't understand. Oh, God, he's back. No, 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 no! Uh, just uh, stun that lurker and just cross over here. You stay back. Cutscene despawn. You want to talk? You talk from there. Don't say you're gonna help. The last person who said that tried to kill me. Hey, take it easy. Uh, I'm not gonna hurt you. Yeah, you got that right. You try it, and you're dead. I think we got off to a bad start here. I'm Isaac. Ellie. What do you want, Isaac? I'm trying to get to the transport hub. I need to get to the government sector. What do you think we were trying to do? Hey, I can help you. Besides, we got a better chance if we stick together. Don't you agree? It's not a chance, Isaac. Other people are just a liability. I'll release the door lock. But after that, you're on your own. And please, don't follow me, okay? Wait, wait. Pulse rounds schematic right here, although I wouldn't say that it's ever worth it to buy pulse rounds. Yeah, for some reason the elevator 
Sound effects never stops here. Because we got a bunch of uh, spitters over here on the ground here. A bunch of tumors here on the ground. Let's go ahead and launch objects to get rid of them. Staying over here will not spawn any enemies, so be careful. I'm saving money at this point. So that I could uh, get the vintage suit. And by getting the vintage suit, I'm able to get power nodes for a lot cheaper. Single female necromorph and a pregnant over here. Sometimes if you're lined up exactly right, but it's uh, very, very, very tough to get. The plasma cutter actually will go through, uh, will actually go through one limb and hit another. Sometimes you might be able to kill an enemy in one shot. But it's super, super rare. There's also a uh, power node to the right over here. Don't have the alt fire on the uh, javelin yet, but it's still useful. My recommendation with the javelin against the spitters would actually just be to hit them with uh, with uh, two primary fires. Also, that uh, particular animation for the necromorph falling over like that is actually the necromorph playing dead. Like if you hit it once and it's down to like half HP and it just falls over, then it's playing dead. So. Go ahead and take care of any other enemies, because that enemy won't get up unless you get close to it. But yeah, you can see like it actually did like a, like a sort of, you know, thrashing around in pain and fell over. When necromorphs die, they die instantly. Always keep that in mind. So, uh, yeah, these are a bunch of really bad babies, and we're going to put them all in timeout. If you put a baby in timeout, it dies. And uh, once it dies, you can pick it up with telekinesis and uh, throw it at other babies. that, see? Thought of all else fails and you don't have an object in front of you that you can use, uh, then by all means use bullets to kill them. One more baby spawns in over there. Get rid of it. But yeah, the timeout chair. Most powerful weapon in the game.
children are very plentiful in this room and they will res they will despawn, so make sure you hit them before they do. We got an enhanced spitter over here. Just uh, hit it with primary fire. I actually didn't have the hang of the javelin yet, so I ended up overusing it here. hit that hack over there we're going to stand in this corner over here more children will rush us we can use the uh, plasma rifle to uh, take out the babies as well Also gotta watch out for that hatch directly to the right. I haven't counted the uh, maximum number of children that can come out of that hatch, but it's probably safe to assume that uh, probably safe to assume that like three or four could come out, but I got two that time. Once this whole section is done, bobs and bits. Flamethrower schematic right here, but, uh, Flamethrower, not so good. Also, power mod, power node right here. Still in denial? Afraid you're gonna cut your wrist? Did you listen to me? You're not listening to this. You may fool Strauss, but I know you're not real. Oh, you claim I'm not real, and yet here I am? Strauss knows how to destroy you. He knows how to destroy the Marker. We will destroy you. How oh, convenient. Destroy the Marker and all the hurt and pain go away. Imagine that, Isaac. You'll never have to listen to your heart. someone. Another survivor. He says he knows you. Isaac. I said stand still. Ellie, take it easy. His name is Strauss. I know him. He looks twitchy. I don't trust him. <laughs> don't move. Ellie, I need him to be not dead. I need him. Okay, Isaac. I'll march him to the hub, but if he does anything stupid, anything, I will shoot him. to escape the CEC facility this morning. 
Wait, you're CEC? Heavy equipment pilot, class four. You? Engineer. Nerd. Figures. Goodbye, Clark. Holy sh! Isaac, look out! It's headed for you! So, for this brood over here, we're just going to go ahead and uh, stasis him if we can actually hit him. This is actually one instance where the pulse rifle is pretty good. Isaac, are you alright? I think that's all of them, for now. Why did Tideman turn off the power? What did you do to piss him off so much? LED. You know what a marker is? Yeah. The unitologist on my crew wouldn't shut up about it. Why? Is it real? Yeah, it's real. Tideman made one using codes, patterns stored in our heads, mine and Strauss. Everything that's happening on this station is happening because of that marker. I have to get to it and destroy it, and I need Strauss to tell me how. You're a strange man, Isaac. Will you help me? We're about to suffocate, so I think I'm better. Okay, good. This will need power. Without it, we have no air and no train. The sprawl's got to have backup batteries somewhere. Yes. The solar arrays up there. But they've been mothballed for years. Okay, all right, good. I'm heading there now. If I can start them up and get some power to the train. You'll need someone to open the collector panels. I can do that. Take Strauss and keep him safe. telekinesis on the other side all these boxes over here you can pick up an extra bit of ammo in this case it was all plasma cutter rounds a little bit of line gun too also here we're going to start seeing uh, mines that were set up which can all be detonated by throwing objects at them. Also, our first encounter with a Wallmaster. If a Wallmaster happens to spit out a little tentacle bitch over here, then we're just going to dismember the tentacle, and it's dead. Unlike in Dead Space 1, a mine pretty much guarantees that a Wallmaster will die. Also, highly recommend just killing Wallmasters because they spit out a lot of money. They're pretty good. Ellie! Oh. How's Strauss doing? With the power off, you can hear noises three blocks away. He's gonna give away my position. Ellie, try to keep him focused. I need to know what he's trying to tell me. Once we come in here, we have to watch out for... One Leaper. So we'll use Stasis and use the uh, Plasma Cutter. And then there's going to be a Spitter over here as well. We'll fry his ass. Yes. 
still saving money for now. And also trying to get rid of all of these uh, extra bullets that we're never going to use. I believe it's at this point that we are also allowed to respec our guns, right? Don't really need the pulse rifle much. of boogers are hiding under that body, so just uh, kill the boogers with the body. some goodies in this big room over here. Power node at the bottom of this shaft. Schematic. For ripper blades. And uh, yeah, so these uh, these jet propellant uh, canisters over here, you can just hit them with any, any object, including bodies. They'll fly. Kelly, I've got the elevator repaired. I'm heading up to the array. How's Strauss doing? How do you think he's doing? Can you hear this shit? He's hallucinating, Ellie. He's part of the signal. This is going to be trouble. It already is. Just keep moving. There's a leaper over here. We'll just go ahead and, uh... Stun him and take him out. I think I'm gonna make another save here. start the elevator, we're going to stand in the center. Don't move anywhere else. Just trust me on this one. have to do is dismember one limb off of any of these tripods and then they drop off them actually hitting you is pretty rare if anything As long as you continue to stand in the center, you should be good.
strafe right and left in order to get these guys to blow their loads really fast. And we can just pick up all the bobs and bits in this room. Don't need to worry about the uh, canister here either. Although it'll certainly be useful for taking out any that are on the ceiling. It's kind of wacky that there are as many necromorphs as there are in this area when the elevator has been destroyed, you know? By the way, you can uh, pick up their projectiles and throw them back at them. Which is pretty handy. Sometimes. But, uh... Definitely put them in stasis first before you do it. He just wanted to live out the rest of his life with his birds. I suppose he did. Still saving money. Go ahead and uh, drag Howard over to the door so that the door unlocks, and then we can save our game here. Station recognized. Greetings, Station Watchman Howard Phillips. I hope you slept well. note in this room and uh, we can just go ahead and uh, vent the atmosphere in this room and uh, once we do that cross over here next to this uh, kinesis recharge stasis recharge sorry Go ahead and get rid of these guys. Fortunately, the uh, fortunately the babies have a small explosion radius, and they can't really hurt you. Waiting for a few seconds to make sure that no more enemies spawn in. One more enemy will spawn in front of us, but it's only after we're done with this puzzle. Attention, Watchman Howard Phillips. Unauthorized engagement of access myth detected. Please respond. Once again. I absolutely cannot stand cannot stand leapers. Yeah, you aim slightly left of center mass whenever you try to throw a, uh, whenever you try to throw a, uh, throw a claw 
back out of Necromorph. And then the claw just misses. It's kind of dumb. Or we're going up this elevator, another dude will pop out. We're just gonna go over here and pick up this javelin. Seems I got rid of his head, which is why he was like swinging around wildly. power node in the lockers over here. And once we grab the power node, another enemy will spawn here. Now that we've upgraded the javelin alt fire all the way, the javelin now explodes. And uh, it's really, really good now. Probably should have done that earlier. So there's a couple of raptors in here. Uh, they don't actually spawn in here until we move up to a certain point in this room. You can kind of hear them running around. There it was. There's the line. Just went ahead and uh, stunned that guy and then his buddy is around the corner. But uh, the mine didn't get him. Needed to aim higher. Possible to mess up, just put the pieces in until they glow green. That's it. Mainframe electrical shielding has been deactivated. Proceed with caution. Next 
Next, we're going to rotate this uh, center column so that we have access to the room on the left. This puzzle just kind of takes a long time, really. Unauthorized visitor, mainframe. Enhanced Necromorph spawns to the right. I have no idea what was going on with the Javelin just like bouncing off of everything. But uh, it does work kind of dumb sometimes. Before we proceed, we are going to... Unauthorized visitor. Slot all of these in. So that they glow green. Then we can press this switch. Before we move on. Before we move on, we're going to go ahead and take all of these out. We're going to reslot them in so that they all turn blue. And in doing so, we can uh, move this panel over here so that we can access a hidden room in the back. Inside this back room is Pang and a couple of power nodes and some goodies. Pang does sell for a lot of money, same as it does in the first game. Also, you get an achievement for getting it. back through here, get our javelin ready. So the mechanics of the javelin, I should mention. Uh, whenever you use the alt fire, it takes an additional javelin. Also, because that enemy just randomly like turned its back towards me, I just decided to use the line gun and hit its shoulder blades so that both of its arms would drop off. Damaging the Pretty good split mo split second decision. And over here, just gonna throw a mine into the center over here so it destroys all of the uh, cores in one shot. Throw a couple of uh, stasis over here. Load these guys up with one, uh, one mine. So sometimes if a uh, if an object flies by the spitting tumors, you can actually have them. Uh, you can actually have the uh, the tumors that they spit out 
like the spitballs actually hit the object mid-flight, and sometimes the AoE from that will actually destroy the tumors for you. So I would say that uh, throwing objects at the tumors is always a good idea, whether they're up high or down low. But especially down low, I mean... Yeah. Also, you've seen the uh, guardian limbs everywhere from the first game. There's only like two guardians that you actually do fight in this game. Not as much of a pain in the ass to fight. Uh, once we get over here, there's uh, several more enemies that we gotta kill. Also, you can detonate the. Uh, you can detonate the. Uh, the alt fire of the javelin instantly by releasing the aim button. You don't have to uh, hold the alt fire button in order to trigger the explosion effect. I decided to go for a stasis instead of shooting that guy. But at the time of recording this segment, I also didn't know that you could just uh, use a singular, um, a singular primary fire to kill the lurkers either. Or maybe there was another reason that I didn't do it. Maybe it's like my primary my primary weapon damage wasn't high enough. Either way, for lurkers, you always want to... Or sorry, not lurkers, leapers. You always want to hit them with stasis. Always, always, always. If you don't then you're in for a bad time. In this node room over here, there's the uh, schematic for the contact beam, which is going to be absolutely necessary for us later. come across a new enemy in a moment. I actually don't know what these guys are called, but uh, I think I'm just going to start calling them space balls or something like that. Okay, they're called space balls. And here's what we're going to do. While we are floating around in outer space, we have to realign all of these uh, solar panels. It looks like two of the mirrors are out of alignment. How's he doing? He's stopped hyperventilating, but I don't know how much longer he's gonna last. I knew he would just slow me down. If Strauss dies, so do my chances of destroying the marker. Keep him alive and get to that panel. All right, Ellie, one down. How's it looking on your end? I'm trying to roll back the cover now. Strauss, can you give me a hand with this? No, oh, he'll hurt me. I'm not strong enough. I promise I'll protect you. Now, just get over here and give me a hand. Yeah. Something covering the collector panel. Oh my god. There's hun there's thousands of them. 
They're breaking apart. Ellie, get out of there. Oh my God, they're heading this way. Run, Strauss, run. Ellie, Ellie, come in. making our way over to the uh, next panel over here just going to grab some grab some ammo so yeah these are uh, these are these are space balls because they very very much look like I guess it's what you would look like if you had three testicles or something like that I don't know anyway uh, the line gun mines destroy them in one shot. Just make sure that the line gun mine hits uh, directly in the center where all the space gun space balls are. Just make sure that the uh, foreskin goes away first before you uh, before you shoot the mine. So there's a ruby semiconductor. Destroying the space balls will uh, actually give you a ruby semiconductor. Get rid of that uh, detonator right there. Detonator mines. So that we can get the uh, semiconductor. going around, making sure that I got absolutely all of these boxes. Just making sure we remain stacked. That is most certainly everything. So now we're going to go back to that elevator. Well, almost everything. Now that's everything. Isaac is back on his Iron Man bullshit. Go right, go left, go left. Go right. Into the middle of this. Into the middle of this whole thing.
heroic landing. I did make another dummy segment to put that stasis back in my inventory because uh, in the next segment I thought I had to kill all the enemies here. So that was kind of a mistake. Just wanted to do that really quick to show I was at full health before saving again. During this dialogue, we're just going to pick up everything in all the walkers and all the boxes that we can. This way! The train is this way! So I was really mad when I figured this out because I spent so much time just like charting out all of the enemy's spawn positions in this room for like an hour straight before I realized that literally all you have to do is just run around in a circle. Open the CC door on your level. Hold on. Don't shoot any enemies because if you do, you will get enemies that you actually have to start shooting. The children that are in this room actually do not run around fast enough to catch up to you, so just keep running in a circle around these columns until the door is open. Piece of shit, Lock. I'm giving it my codes, but it's not working. And as long as you keep running around in a circle and you haven't shot any of the children, then you don't have to worry about any other enemy, you don't have to worry about any other attacks, just keep running in a circle. Yes, I'm authorized for this! Open up, you bastard! Oh. I'm actually told by uh, someone who's done a uh, plasma cutter only no damage run by the name of Con111 that uh, apparently the children slow down while they are off it's screen. Open. Either go! It's an awesome run, by the way. You guys should check that out. Go, Isaac! You can't stop them all! Go! Ellie, are you guys there? Did you make it? Isaac. Hey, take it easy. It's okay. No, it's not. I was right here this morning with a crew of 30 people. But we were overrun. And before I knew it, they transformed. I had to cut the arms and legs off my friends just to escape. I'm sure there's pieces of them still lying around here somewhere. Kelly, I know. I'm sorry. And here I am again. I've just walked one big f***ing circle today. We'll get through this. Let's figure out how to meet up. Right. Um, there's a, a central hub in the main facility. Here are the coordinates. I 
think there's some necromorph writing in the static on these transmissions. If anyone here knows how to translate that stuff, please be sure to write it in the comments, okay? Power node here, once again in plain sight. I'd say right about here is probably a good time to start just focusing on using the javelin for the most part. Once we've grabbed everything in there, we can uh, go and get the vintage suit. Oh, so uh, I actually recorded something pretty funny this segment that, you know, a bit of a past Carsey thing that actually ended up working. After we go into that node room, a bunch of enemies will spawn in. And uh, you have full iframes while you are uh, switching out your suit. It's so dumb. So during this whole dumbass animation, they can't hit you. At this point, I started mashing the G key just to get out of here, and I mashed stasis as quickly as I could. Then I planted a mine, and I ran. Absolutely do not do this. Don't try this at home. The enhanced necromorphs drop around uh, 1500 credits at this point in the game, and I think later in the game they drop like 30k. Either way, now we have the uh, powered up stasis. Shut up! I'm trying to. F commentate here, asshole. Right, so once we have finished looting that room, now that we got the vintage suit, we're going to go back and we are going to sell all of our bobs and bits. And power nodes are now 10% off. So that's why I've been saving up until this very point to start selling power node or start buying power nodes. Really, the vintage suit is only good for the buy menus. Once you've gotten the vintage suit and you've gotten the requisite uh, upgrade. Sorry, the inventory upgrade. Then you can switch back to the security suit and still get that uh, plus 10% power boost on your uh, pulse rifle if you want. Look to the left before this hallucination. Power node. Jammed. This must have been the last stand for whoever's left down here. Can you get the door open on your end? No. The circuits are fried. 
They must have fused the panel trying to keep those things out. There's gotta be another way in. The only other way is through the processing plant. But it's not meant for human traffic. Step boy. I think I can stop it from here, though. All right, do it. The steps. You want me to follow the steps? I want to take others to Ross. I'll be there soon. Better move in this room would certainly be to use the javelin gun. But it's okay if not. Just group those guys together, use stasis and use a mine. There's uh, four enemies in this room total. Right here, we're going to upgrade damage output. Save our capacity upgrades for later. Although probably actually not even really necessary. I would actually just say go ahead and upgrade it all the way. Uh, putting all of these nodes on the pulse rifle here was a mistake because I thought that I was going to end up using alt fire and trying to make that useful, but really all I did was just, uh, you know, just wasted 5,000 credits later. I should have just sold the pulse rifle at this point. Maybe instead just uh, invest those uh, nodes into perhaps the uh, plasma cutter instead. I think I've hit a dead end. Looks like some kind of venting system up ahead. Right. Manually shutting down the plant throws all the pressure valves in place. You'll need to find a way to force it. Uh, so, yeah, at this point in the game, you could most certainly just start buying a bunch of javelins instead, because javelins are super cheap. Can't you shut these things off? No, somehow Tideman declared me dead in the system. Now my codes don't work anymore. They're kidding. Oh, sh Wait, Something's wait. coming. Strauss, no. help me with the door. I need you to see him. I need you to follow the steps. What? No, just shut up and help me. God damn it! <laughs> So because, yeah, my primary fire damage on the javelin is uh, completely upgraded, could have just used the javelin on these guys instead, but actually I don't think I was aware that the javelin could kill them in one shot at this point, maybe. Don't worry, I rectified it later.
of that canister so that we could uh, get through here too. Once we're over here, we are going to encounter more space balls. And we're just going to use alt fire on the line gun to take them out. If you're in zero gravity, then uh, firing alt fire with the line gun will actually fire the uh, the mine in a straight line all the way to your target. It doesn't arc, you don't have to worry about that, which is uh, pretty handy. So you can just launch a mine directly into the center of the space balls and win. to our left is one more power node. Oh, hey, hey. oh god, Isaac! Glad to see you've got all your parts. You alright? Um, yeah. There are four steps. No thanks to Twitchy here. One, two, three, four. Step four. Show me waiting. Jesus, Dross. You okay? It's getting worse. What is step four? Who will be waiting? If the screws, if the needle, she'll be waiting. He's not going to make it. We got to keep moving. There's an industrial transport upstairs. It runs on the same spoke as the commuter train. It should get us to government she'll, sector. She'll, One of us will have to deploy it from the gear house. Staring, asking. I stay here and uh, I try to get him on his feet. If the needle, she'll be waiting. Next chapter, by the way, absolutely brutal. So, dealing with uh, three leapers, but uh, the leapers will spawn in at like random times. It's pretty dumb. As soon as that first guy spawns in, that first uh, necromorph that climbs over the railing spawns in. Another uh, leaper will spawn in above. Uh, the leaper that comes out of the hatch directly in front of us. The one that came out of the hatch before this guy here showed up. Uh, he spawns in at a random time. I have no idea how to uh, deal with him. And I think that uh, third leaper comes in after we take care of Hatch Leaper. Babies crawling in like so many ants. We're not going to be using the pulse rifle for much longer. As a matter of fact, I get rid of it in this segment. As long as we don't cross too far, we can uh, take out the spitter over here. Once we cross around uh, this line over here, a timer counts down, and then these guys will spawn in. 
and they die in one javelin. I didn't want to outright sell the pulse rifle until I was able to uh, respec it and get the nodes back. And there's a bench uh, further down. But I did go ahead and get rid of the line gun because we don't really need the line gun anymore. I wanted to sell down to uh, 5,000 credits. So I bought a bunch of uh, javelin spears because we're going to start uh, using the javelin pretty heavily from here on in. Uh, do what I say, not what I do. Sell down to 5,000. Don't sell down to 4,000. I was expecting that an enemy might uh, drop a thousand additional credits, but there is no guarantee of that. So please sell down to 5,000. Don't worry, you can get more javelins later. So right here is uh, our first encounter with a... Uh, is our first encounter with a... Uh, 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 what are they called again? Guardian. Right. So if you stasis and use two explosions, then they'll... You'll destroy the Guardian, and whenever he splits into a bunch of limbs, the secondary explosion will take out the limbs. We gotta stand at uh, that end of the horseshoe that I was standing at, closer to the power node, before uh, depressurizing the room and uh, sucking out the enemies. Why would I do this now for you? If you stand any closer, then you won't be able to hit the red button in time. Oh, sorry. Apparently, tall, thin guys that uh, split into a bunch of parts are called dividers. Go to the left here, and uh, this wall guardian over here will get all its tentacles out. The base mechanic with the wall guardi with the wall guardians, in case you don't know, is you have to sever all of the tentacles, and a single explosion will take out all of the tentacles. Once we're up here, be careful. Uh, you'll take out the one necromorph here, and uh, don't let the uh, don't let the splitter here get very close. So one thing we can also do is once this guy attacks, uh, they actually attack really slowly. Ah, but dang. I was trying to, uh, I was trying to grab that, uh, that pregnant right there so that I could actually get its money because it actually does drop like 3,000 credits. And that is where I messed up. I was about ready to reset, but I got lucky enough to find a thousand credits on the next mob of enemies. This puzzle pretty self-explanatory. Match the shapes. really nice things about the javelin is that you don't actually have to uh, dismember enemies in order to kill them. It's one of the few guns that actually lets you uh, kill an enemy really fast with just straight damage. Lucky me. 3,000 credits right there. So I was able to respec, and I didn't have to run back to the machine. 
Otherwise, I would have sped up the video. Now we got our nodes back. I decided to go ahead and dump them into capacity because the reload time on the javelin is kind of long sometimes. Before we proceed, getting on the tram, I wanted to go back and uh, go ahead and sell the pulse rifle just to get it out of my inventory so that uh, I would spawn more javelin. I also decided to get the contact beam because the contact beam is going to come in super handy later. It's actually the main reason why I wanted to respect the pulse rifle was so that I could lean into using the contact beam. And these are the uh, these are the guns that I'm going to be using for the rest of the game. At this point, I don't even think that I buy any more um, any more power nodes. Except only as necessary to max out the contact beam. The special upgrade on the contact beam allows you to uh, apply stasis to your alt fire, which is super, super good late game. In his head. Listen to me. Stop staring at me. Stop it. Relax. Isaac, we have to get out of here. Right. Let's go. I've always thought that Strauss looks like a f***ed up Casey Neistat just a little bit. Oh my god. It can't be. That's the Ishimura. Yeah. Used to be the pride of the CEC. Sad story, actually. I heard everybody on board died. Some sort of terrorist attack. What? Terrorist attack? What happened aboard that ship was not a terrorist attack. What do you mean? That's where all this started, Ellie. Everything that's happening here happened on that ship. I saw it. I was on board when it happened. Hey! 
What's happening? I I don't know. Someone's blocking the track. Stay here. I'll take a look. So the thing about uh, triggering these guys to spit on proximity is to be very careful about the uh, surrounding area that you can walk on. Is sometimes you can walk on some uh, some gunk, and then Isaac will slow down. And if that happens and you don't have full foot speed, then you can't do that trick. Our crew is chasing us. Our dead crew is chasing us. It's just me and Ellie right now. We're not gonna make it. No. Get up, Caleb. It's just a few more meters. I hear them coming. Don't kill us both, Ellie. Just run. I'll save you. Just go. No, Caleb! Caleb! This is the other from shift one. So with raptors, uh, we can just toss a javelin in front and basically just uh, trigger the alt fire whenever they uh, come into path of the javelin, and then let go of the uh, aim button whenever they get uh, close enough. Because the electricity will actually stun them out of their uh, charge. So like whenever they start to charge at you, the electricity will freeze them in place, and then once the uh, electricity electricity proc is taking place you can just go ahead and let go of the uh, you can let go of the raise weapon button while holding the alt fire button and then the javelin will detonate immediately but uh, if all that fails for whatever reason Use stasis. Also, if you pick up uh, schematics for weapon ammo for guns that you do not have, then yeah, it does it does spawn in just at a a very very lesser. Uh, rate than if you actually have the guns in your inventory. It does still spawn in. So I think in the future, if I do another no damage run of this, I'm going to avoid picking up all of the schematics. Just only pick up the schematics that I absolutely need. You can see just... You can just see how absolutely easy it is to just uh, detonate javelins and destroy things. Wall Guardian over here, there's an explosive barrel right here. Just toss it and the Wall Guardian is dead. Grab it and chuck it. Ruby Semiconductor, and uh, thing for Seeker Shells. This 
so I guess, yeah, the Seeker ammo started spawning in because I picked up the Seeker rifle schematic. But the bullets spawn in at a uh, lesser rate. If a tumor is in a place where I just, like, don't want to detonate it, then I just use the plasma cutter to do it. Another Necromorph will spawn to our left, so watch out for him. So I bought three nodes over here and a bunch of javelin spears just to top ourselves off. Chloride. Those explode if they overheat. Perfect. So we're just going to wait for this uh, explosive barrel dispenser to give us more barrels. We're not going to use the two barrels that are directly in front of us. Uh, reason being, it will be of better benefit for us to take them down with us. So that we can start throwing the barrels on the way down. There's an invisible wall here that prevents us from throwing the barrels while we're up here. So we have to come down here no matter what. Okay, we're going to stay on the elevator and then we're going to just use the primary fire on the javelin gun to take out the arms of these tripods. Yes, it will. Tell Strauss to hold on. Make sure you uh, backstep whenever they jump into the air, because they're going to land on your last known position. And then on the way out, just stun and run. your persistence, Mr. Clark. But this is bigger than you and bigger than the lives of everyone on this station. Sir, final preparations for attack are wrapping up. Looks like it ends here. At this point, it's all just dead weight. Isaac, what did he mean? What did he mean when he said dead weight? He's using the solar beam. We gotta stop the transport now. Oh, shit.
He's cut the station in half. There's no tracks to get across on. Back us up. Back us up to the station. What? Why? Just do it, Ellie. Hurry. <sighs> the Ishimura. If the gravity tethers are still functional, I can... You can snag off second drag it back? Isaac, this is ridiculous. If I can line the tracks up just for a few seconds, you should be able to get the transport across. Stay ready. And take care of Strauss. Isaac, no! This is a really bad idea. I'll stick around. I'm full of bad ideas. here things didn't go so well look i'll contact you soon so once we move all of the uh all of the junk this way we can go in here and there is a uh, power node and also some credits and some uh an audio log you really don't hear anything when you're cleaning these bathrooms? Every shift, I swear, I hear something in the walls, like a, a scratching noise. When I stop moving, it stops. When, when I move again, it waits. Gravity and life support on reserve power. Primary systems offline. Main centrifuge offline for repairs. Damn it. That's what I thought. What? The gravity centrifuge is under repair. I'm gonna have to go down to engineering. This should be interesting. Is it safe? I don't know how it could be. I'll let you know. There's a uh, bench in the cut off the limbs room that wasn't there before. We'll go ahead and use that to upgrade our contact beam even more.
Kendrick. Did you come in last shift? Did anyone? I, I think it's just me down here now. I got lost last night when the lights went out and I fell down the ramp. I think. Or someone tricked me. I'm all bruised on my left side and my ankle is swollen. Are you sure you guys aren't down here? I, I hear something in my room. Screw this! I'm heading up! I will never come back here again! Right, so now that we're over here, uh, it would have been possible to actually use the contact beam on this guy while he was, like, hidden. The contact beam has maxed out damage from the get-go, so... Whatever you, uh, whatever you fire is going to be max damage at all times. Just try to shoot the limbs if you can. Always prioritize the brutes. Apparently I did enough to get rid of this guy. Once more of these guys spawn in, we're going to try to stay on the left hand side here. Got to be careful about these guys spawning out of the vents. You don't even really need to worry that much about looting ammo either. But yeah, once again for the pregnants, whenever they uh, whenever they swing at you, that's your opportunity to hit them with a singular javelin in their leg. And they are completely out of HP. That's all it takes. It's just the base javelin damage plus the damage from getting rid of their leg. Power node over here that we can grab before we get on the elevator. Okay, no Ellie, it isn't safe. But I'm on my way to the centrifuge. Just be careful. I'll call you when it's online. Always try to see if there is a lesser value item that you can drop. Picking up uh, med packs. The engineering deck has not completed final cleanup and decontamination. Especially because these uh, double med packs over here sell for 2500. Try to buy as many as we can until we get to under 9000. By all javelin spears. I didn't actually need to run back and pick this one up. Is just a little bit more. Dr. Heidi Latchford, Research Summary Organic Material Analysis. There are several shocking findings relating to the sludge like material found throughout the Ishimura. First, it is human DNA. Second, and far more disturbing, it reanimates in the presence of a marker signal. 
The only conclusion we can come to is that the entire Ishimura crew was infected and reconstructed and then fell into a soupy DNA sludge when the E27 marker was destroyed. back into this menu and uh, use these nodes on contact beam to get additional charge. Less time it takes to charge, the faster it works. Decontamination initializing. Look to your left, look to your right. There's going to be a spitter, a lurker, and a raptor. And whenever we move too far into this hallway, more enemies will spawn in. So just take it nice and easy. Pregnant over here. We'll just back off, wait for it to start attacking, and then now. Once we go to the end here, three more enemies will spawn. Female Necromorph, a Raptor, and an Enhanced Spitter, which we will destroy with primary fire. Primary fire is good enough for the uh, half raptors that are just uh, crawling on the ground here. Once we walk over this way, this uh, pregnant will spawn either behind us or in front of us. There's also another lurker accompanying it. That's a spitter, by the way, not a not a raptor. Even though they have the same animation, that is a uh, that is a spitter. So don't get too complacent thinking that every enemy that uh, has that particular kind of locomotion is going to be a raptor. Also, yeah, I gotta gotta watch out for that guy. What a dick. I think I was just like completely unaware of that guy sneaking up on me for like a full five seconds, but I should have turned around and actually killed him before I hit that door to begin with. Entering zero gravity. Let that be a lesson to you. There's four pieces to the uh, gravity centrifuge puzzle in this room. We just gotta make sure that we match the uh, match the pipes. And then we can flip the switch.
Okay. I've almost got us disconnected from the Magra. Keep me posted. So once we go back through uh, decontamination over here, we actually do have to fight some enemies. The first of which are going to bash through the uh, window to the right. So, take these guys out, and that's four children, five, whatever, I lost count. But they stop showing up whenever the uh, enhanced necromorphs here spawn in. Use the primary fire to dispose of these guys. Especially because there's spitters in here. And the spitters will absolutely f*** you up. If you use the uh, javelin fire's alt mode. Or sorry, the javelin's alt fire mode. I've been doing a uh, marathon commentary recording up to this point. It's been like four hours, almost five hours actually. And I'm a little tired, you'll have to forgive me. Isaac, oh, Stross is starting to worry me. Listen, I, I would never. I would never. He's not a murderer. Stross, a Stross. Never hurt he's me. not real. Yes, he is. You can't see him because you haven't taken the steps, Stross. You will be put down at the step screwdriver. Three. Step three. Yeah. Stross! <laughs> Ellie! Ellie. I start to keep uh, stasis modules at this point on the off chance that I need them. Better to uh, have them and not need them than need them and not have them. Wait, did I accidentally buy force energy there?
hurt. The bastard bit me. What? Ah, sh**. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. But he stopped talking. He won't look at me. How's it going at your end? And please tell me this plan is going to work. I'm almost there. I'm headed to the bridge now to activate the gravity tethers. All good. They're swarming in through a hole in the medical deck. At least you won't have to go through there. Unexpected obstruction ahead. Shutting down. Welcome to the medical deck. Crap. Right, so just stand at the uh, edge of the hallway here and just like kind of snipe these guys as they come through. It's just a straight hallway and uh, all the enemies that you see down here, like that's pretty much it. As long as you don't let any of them go down the ramp, they can't spit at you or anything like that. Yeah, so watch out for this guy. He'll just uh, come out of the vent. And keep in mind the explosion radius for these guys. I feel like if I got any closer, then I would have actually gotten my shit pushed in. There's also a spitter that comes in here. Enhanced spitter. Also, don't forget there was a power node in there. Don't forget to also grab the power node in this room.
watch out for this lurker over here. We can just use a javelin to get rid of it. And then next up, we have to worry about a uh, a leaper. It will either come out of uh, the vent above the electrical vortex there, or it'll come out of a vent on the far right of the room from where I was looking. But basically, you just got to try to take note of where the uh, the leapers spawn, and then try to uh, use the alt fire on the javelin to take them out. Fortunately, the uh, electricity proc on the alt fire of the javelin does freeze them in place, so you can just let go of the uh, aim button and blow them up. Once we. Uh, once we pull the battery out, we try to cross into where the electricity vortex is. And then we turn around and we fire at the enemy that comes out. And then put the battery back in before the other enemies get us. Because one more uh, enhanced necromorph will come out. And the electricity vortex will kill it. I absolutely cannot stand leapers. So at this point, our contact beam is fully upgraded, so we can go ahead and start uh, using uh, power nodes on our plasma cutter as well. After getting the uh, power node, I just rush in here and just ignore all the other uh, lurkers around here because the chapter is almost done. Javelin is also very good for boogers, so whenever you see a bunch of boogers, you can just electrocute them. 
that's an enhanced leaper. These guys are uh, exceptionally annoying. Especially if we go back, then they go into their uh, room reset state. There are raptors around these boxes over here, and we're just going to uh, hit them around the corner. Take this room nice and easy, so that you spawn in as few enemies as possible. That's also an enhanced spitter right there, so it'll take uh, two javelins to kill. But it can still be really annoying if you're not careful. If anything pops up behind us, we mop it up immediately. From this point, there should only be two enhanced spitters left. Also, if a booger gets you, uh, as long as it's just one booger, you can mash F and get rid of it. And it won't actually do any damage to you, as I will now demonstrate. You can see I can't use that health item. The game won't let me use the health item, which means my health is at 100%. Ellie, I'm almost to the captain's nest to activate the tethers. All right. The centrifuge will explode to full power from here. Great. Let's hope this works. It'll be tight. You ready? All set. I'll wait for your signal. Okay. 
This won't hurt a bit. Not my heart and hope to die. Trust! Stick a needle in your eye. Trust! Yeah, damn it! Alright, so there's a bunch of raptors here, like just, just, just two of them, and once we cross a certain line, then a bunch more will spawn in behind us. Yeah, by now you should have a pretty good idea of how to deal with these guys. So like five raptors and a bunch of uh a bunch of babies. I actually don't even know what they're called. Like what is their official name? Probably crawler or something like that. If I had to take a guess. Why did you do it, Strauss? I can't face it. I thought it only could. I had to make her see it. What can't you face? What's the last step? Her. What you were afraid of that I face her and destroy the market. That's too much. You have to go. You need to see step three. So right, across that, uh, across that gap there was a power node, which you saw me pick up. And then there's a bunch of tumors here. A lot of objects that we can throw at these guys to get them out of the way. And then there's another power node over here. Also, how many games do you know where you can kill an enemy by throwing a med pack at it? up to this point. No need to buy any more, uh... There's no need to buy any more nodes. I'm just gonna keep javelin. Keep using javelin on everything. This 
this guy is covering his face. He is only uh, preventing the inevitable, which is that we're just going to alt fire him and we're going to kill him. a timer that spitter will spawn in and then once we uh, start going down the slope over here another enemy over here so as you can see I did get hit by a uh, I did get hit by a spitter and here's a med pack and now watch this see the spitter projectiles actually do not cause any damage to you at all they slow you down, but they don't do any damage to you. So use that information as you will. So at this point I'm just waiting by this hole for any more lurkers to pop out. Because this is about the only place where these uh, staggered enemy timers are actually spawning enemies. And after that one is dead, then uh, two more enemies will spawn on the slope over here. that battery and uh, toss it over there. Once we do that, more lurkers will spawn in. They just kind of slowly spawn in, and I'm actually not sure like uh, what the triggers are exactly. I think they might be on a timer, and some of them might be uh, might be programmed to spawn in whenever you like grab the battery or cross a certain line in the room. more uh, exploding enemies here. We have to go upstairs in order to get to uh, in order to get to the uh, exit. I got hit by a spitter again. As you can see it slows you down but it doesn't do any damage. There we go. Just did it again. Should a 
scare you, Isaac. We've been waiting for you. Now it's your turn. Oh, God. Ellie, step free. into the mines. I've got problems on this end too. Get somewhere safe. Oh, I'll try. Yeah, so be extra super careful on the uh, space balls over here. Because the uh, if you're not using the line gun, then it actually doesn't uh, destroy the space balls quite so quickly. I would say that's about the only thing that the line gun actually has over the javelin is the uh, is a bigger explosive range. And it absolutely wrecks face against the space balls. But once we've moved those lasers out of the way and we've gotten the schematic over there, that's all the uh, goodies in this area. We can just move on ahead. Where's Strauss? Oh, I'm safe for now, but he's lost it. I think he's coming for you. I found something you're going to want to see. Here's my location. Oh. Hurry and get here. I'm not in any shape to be fighting. I'll get there as soon as I can. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah, so these guys, we're just going to impale them, get rid of them. Not even really much reason to loot these guys either. Because by the end of the game, I've got quite a surplus on ammunition. Once we cross this rock, gotta watch out. There's an enhanced spitter right here. As you can see, they don't die in one shot from a, an explosive barrel. From an explosive barrel. So, I had to finish it off with a javelin. There's also a uh, power node right there on that net. You gotta watch out for that gentle purple glow. Enemies here generally can't decide where they're going to spawn. Another one is going to drop down there. It's a, just a spitter. And then one more is going to drop in front of us. Enhanced Necromorph. I had a little bit of difficulty nailing that guy down, and then his buddy spawns in behind us, so got to watch out for him too. And doing these guys in with the uh, line gun strats would have actually been quite terrible. And it's plain to see why the Javelin is the far superior gun. But yeah, with those two uh, enhanced necromorphs there done, we can proceed. We use 
use a power lock here, or a power node here, to get into this power lock. There's a schematic for the advanced suit, which will max out our inventory spaces. And also there's a uh, bronze semiconductor, but a bronze semiconductor is only worth a thousand. Don't get it. Trust me, don't get it. The reason why you want to come into this room is for that, uh, is for that power suit. this junk next. We absolutely need to stack ourselves with a lot of javelins now as well. But not before we pick up the advanced suit. Before uh, buying anything else, I would recommend actually getting the um, getting the other suit back. The advanced suit does let you uh, charge a little easier, though. Your stasis. I actually should have just gone down the ramp. I don't even know why I went down this elevator here. Who 
before we call the elevator down, there's a power node across the gap. As well as a bunch of other goodies. As long as we stand in this corner, enemies will always spawn at the, uh... Will always spawn at the front and rear of the room. And once you kill the second enemy, you can, uh, detonate your alt fire in order to get them to drop their items. Because I think the bodies do despawn. Just watch out for a third enemy, if anything. I might recommend uh, aiming your gun to the left for the enemy that shows up at the back of the room here. Just ever so slightly. Just to make sure that, uh, you know, if he decides to break into a full sprint like that, then his turning is hampered a little bit. So he'll be coming at you at a different angle. Just uh, be mindful of that. Switch back over to the vintage suit here. Because we want to exercise them discounts.
power node in the back. Over here. Looks like the mechanic was dragged away before he could finish fixing this. Strauss is dead, Ellie. Oh, I'm not sorry about that. So what happens now? I thought you needed Strauss to destroy the marker. Strauss couldn't lead us to the marker. He was running away from his guilt. What about you? I'm not running anymore. I know what I have to do. Well, this drill's a stroke of good luck, finally. Why don't you get up to the cab to try to get it started? I'll look for the other power cell. All right. Let's see what I can do from up here. Up to the uh, drill section, there's not really much to... There's not really much anything that poses an actual risk. Just doing like a singular puzzle room and that's it. Run over to the other side here before dragging this battery. Because it's faster. Hey, what did you do? I just lost the control holograms. Yeah, this is what you're doing. Yeah. I'll have to find another one. Well, it's standard. There should be another one around here somewhere. Uh, I'll look. Any luck up there? Well, no. Not now. Right. Also, the semiconductor that I picked up during the conversation. I believe it was a diamond semiconductor. Which is worth 25, 25k. Waited for the other guy to climb up so that I could detonate the alt fire. Just two enemies there. Great. I think I've put wide the system to bypass the map cards. Thank God. Yeah. And then over here to the left. Spitter. Just hit him with two javelins and he's done. And after we uh, put in the uh, the nav card over here, solving the next puzzle will be a point of no return. I think I've got it from up here. Just from down here. What? I didn't hear you. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Or I should say it'll trigger a crap ton of enemies, so definitely avoid it. this point, I'm going to go ahead and sell the javelin. And then we're going to dump all of our money into buying contact energy. Make sure that you have the vintage suit equipped before you go and buy the contact energy. Otherwise, you are going to run out of money very fast. But it's fine, we have like a full inventory of contact energy now, and we're never going to run out for the rest of the game. You can just play the rest of the game like this. Uh, there, you know, there's a lift on the other side. 
side. I'll turn around, you can get on. So once Ellie starts turning the drill around, uh, we'll pull out the plasma cutter and just wait up here. Some children are going to spawn in. As long as we stay up here, then other enemy types will not spawn in. Basically, we're just going to wait for Ellie to drop the lift on the drill so that we can make a mad dash for the drill whenever it does happen. Because at this point, we're doing a Resident Evil 4 style bulldozer auto scroller, essentially. Shooting gallery, you know how it goes. Once we pass this uh, line over here, you can see other enemies just uh, spawn over that way. Alrighty, let's see what this beast can do. Which is why you should wait until Ellie drops the lift before you make a mad dash for it. So you can see that uh, the contact beam charges really, really fast. And also the alt fire. You have invincibility frames for like the first part of the alt fire, I think. Maybe it's the entire animation, I don't actually know. I haven't used it that much. I mostly abused the alt fire on the final boss. But um, the alt fire does area damage. Like not as much as uh, the primary fire. The mind was swarming with these things! But it does serve as a uh, pretty decent oh shit button if enemies get too close. Yeah, so there's uh, there's some there's some lurkers to the right. We gotta gun them down. Just uh, be careful when they start shooting. Got to be ready to dodge them bullets. And that's pretty much it for these guys. While well, we're going through this uh, narrow part of the tunnel right here. Hang on! We're coming up on more of that stuff! Sorry! More of them are going to climb up the side, so we're just going to uh, blast them off. Be very, very careful about the, uh, very, very careful around these, uh, spitters, though, because we have very limited space to work with as far as dodging them goes. I actually do wonder if maybe I should have kept the javelin for, like, uh, as far as this goes instead. Because then I would have an option to kill them without, uh, dealing with any of their, any suicide bullet bullshit. Three more lurkers are going to spawn up here. And then more enemies are going to crawl up on the side. Just like one more, I think. For now. Then it's going to move. Okay, yeah, so there's like two right there. I'm just like snapping my aim around just to kind of... Yeah, so after this third guy, that's when we want to start shooting the lurkers, but before that, we actually want to be very careful. As you can see, I came close to getting hit several times.
reach the foundation piles of the government sector. So how do we get in there? Straight ahead. We do have a giant drill. <coughs> you know, I'm right on top of this thing, right? Really? government sector and I'm guessing that marker of yours is behind that huge door over there well I better move fast those things are gonna find a way up the hole we drilled there's got to be an elevator or something connecting these floors I'm gonna try to make my way to you all right I'll meet you halfway Ship docked here. What? Is it damaged? Not that I can tell. Isaac, do you hear me? We're gonna make it out of here alive. It's too dangerous for you to stay here, Ellie. What are you talking about? Just get your ass in here. I'm starting a system check now. There's a power node over here, and if you break the ATM, there's another 10k. security personnel every entrance is covered even if you do get in you won't get by to get into this room we have 
plenty of uh, opportunities to just range these guys. As long as you hit an enemy center mass with the uh, contact beam, then you will kill them in one shot. You will kill them in one shot, they will just uh, blow up, and that's it. But also, gotta make sure that we pick up the power node in this room. Be careful. You can miss it. Even these enhanced lurkers right here will die in one shot. Be careful about the splash with the, uh... With the, uh, spitter vomit. Just try to kill the spitters before they vomit as much as possible. Spitters will vomit faster than a lurker will get into position to fire three bullets at you. So I would say in general prioritize the lurkers unless you are ducking around a corner. I prioritize the spitters unless you are ducking around a corner and a lurker comes after you. But the spitters are actually going to have like a uh, Pretty, uh, pretty slow mobility anyway. Unless they're enhanced spitters. Enhanced spitters can run, so watch out. Stay to the right here. I can't drop my tool unless he circumcised me. Come and get it. So this is a really tough room right here. Uh, go ahead and let that Infector turn that uh, Necromorph. Just take this whole room nice and slow. Because that Infector, it, it, it's like there's no other bodies in here. Everything might as well just be a Necromorph. Yeah, it looks like that Necromorph just keeps uh, going left and right and left and right. So once I let them uh, go closer to the metal detectors, I just back off. And uh, I can use the alt fire on these uh, boogers over here as well. Any enemy that can die in one hit, try to snipe it with the, uh, try to snipe it with the, uh, plasma cutter. Isaac, where are you going? That's why I'm here, Isaac. To show you the way.
goodies over here to the left. Ken Phelps, Research Log 43509. I can't stop thinking about the formulas from Patient 4's last session. They're so clearly ordered to keep playing back in my mind. The final configuration seems within reach, I can almost solve it myself. It's funny, I was telling Travis the other day that it's almost like it wants us to succeed. I've never seen anything like it. Once we finally solve this heuristic stabilization problem, we should be able to start growing the laser to market from the mineral bath. <laughs> Spitter to the left. This room is going to have a lot of enemies, but uh, if we enter, once we enter, we can uh, take out the infector right there so that it stops turning bodies. And the only enemies that are left are the ones that are uh, just going to spawn in on timer. So here's what we can do. We just stand close to the save point here. And we just pay attention to audio cues in order to try to find them. One of the reasons we also want to stay close to the save point as well is because when the uh, sploders come in, we'll be a very good distance away from them, so that that way we don't have to uh, worry about shooting them, blowing them up, and uh, getting blown up ourselves. Because they'll move pretty slowly around these corridors. Once again, take this area nice and easy. The dampening system built into the shielding around the market should be blocking the signal entirely, but I swear the dimension signal is still getting through. Not a single thing registers on any sensor outside the shield walls. You know, put the same sensor inside with the marker and it goes off the charts. So we either missed something entirely or the marker is just completely blocking the signal. Yeah, it's not working. 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 So dividers are here. Well, there's one divider. If we go into this room and we loot everything... Good trade in this room, by the way. Because we get a ruby semiconductor. I dropped the med pack in order to get more stasis. And then once we uh, come out here, there's a divider. We'll hit him with the primary fire. And then once these guys divide, we're just going to use the alt fire and wax them all. All dead. The reason why I want to use my nodes on the plasma cutter is because you can't sell the nodes. So keeping the plasma cutter until the end of the game allows me to sell the plasma cutter with all the nodes attached and make a buttload of money. Nice and easy on these guys. 
best thing to do is to just go back to the beginning of the room. Center mass will destroy them. When this guy spawns in at the window over here. We're going to uh, stun him, run, and light him up. Maybe like what five six raptors in here and uh maybe two to three uh spitters the last spitter doesn't spawn in until uh research log 16671 it's the same signal dementia and codes and blueprints are all caused by the same signal on the marker it's the people that are different the smart people see codes and blueprints but to everyone else it's just noise the noise that drives you mad yeah that's it just two spitters once we're over here, we pull out the uh, plasma cutter to get rid of this uh, tumor over here. More goodies over here. You can save your game if you want. What is that? I can feel it in my head. We're getting closer, Isaac. The marker knows you're here. I still don't know what to do. When the time comes, you will. Over here in the spinning laser room, this is a bit of a bit of a pain in the ass. But you know the deal. There's some babies over here. We're just gonna poke with the plasma cutter to get rid of them. Doing that actually allowed me to kill the uh, enhanced necromorph there that was playing dead. I don't believe that these lasers can be slowed down with stasis either. So just take your time and kill every enemy that is on the screen before you move on. Give it about another uh, 5 to 10 seconds just to make sure that no more enemies spawn in and then move on. stasis over here for this guy that pops out here then we're gonna run over to the other side just stay here and uh, let the enemies come to us another power node in the cabinet here in a sec. Don't get too close before you uh, before you run. Because these uh, these lasers actually have uh, pretty big hitboxes. And they'll fuck you up if you get too close. this box over here we got a lot of enemies to kill just contact being them all to death and we'll take the elevator up
press this button to deactivate the laser array. We can just pull these things down. Make a little bridge. goodies over here, but uh, going over here will spawn two enemies. If you get stunned from an enemy falling through, uh, just use Kinesis. Just to demonstrate that I didn't lose any HP from that, tried to use a health item again, and the game didn't let me. These corpses do have items. Kinder Phelps, research log 43546. Success. The marker layer held up. It is a fully expressed physical representation of the heuristic algorithms from patient four. With some breakdowns, the construction schedule begins in earnest tomorrow. Celebration is tonight. I hope I don't black out in the middle of the party. I'm anxious for some reason. Absolutely worth saving here, by the way. So this area, there's a million enemies, and we are going to instead be using our stasis. Just like, don't even bother shooting these guys, because they will spawn in, and they will spawn in with a vengeance. Trust me on this one, using stasis and running through is easier. The doors do take a while to open, and while the doors are opening, just turn your back to the door, and then pass through backwards while using stasis on enemies that are crowding behind you. Once we get down here, all those enemies that uh, we just ran past, they will despawn. That is why we don't stay and fight. This guy we actually do have to fight. He does have a ruby semiconductor though.
What are they doing? They're all coming to the marker. Convergence is at hand. I didn't know you were trouble from the start, but they told me you were necessary. That your mind was the purest. I spent years sifting through your demented brain. This is not the way it was supposed to happen. Well, how was it supposed to happen, Tyvek? We had it under control! Clark, this is not our fault! We were so close to understanding it. So uh, for this needle, just uh, slow it down, and if you let go of the button, then Isaac will calm down, and it makes it easier for you to stick the needle in his eye. So to deal with the uh, to deal with the uh, the regenerator here, uh, just hit him with a stun and get rid of his leg. Because it actually takes a lot longer for him to get back up that way. He also will not disturb you in this next room over here. So take your time. But he'll be periodically chasing you throughout all of chapter 14. One more power node in here too. Then we can save. Simon, this evacuation is illegal. You know that. Don't you dare tell me what I can and cannot do on my own station. My grandfather was running this place long before you were crapping your diapers, young man. I don't need a lecture from you, and you know I'm right. 
Project protocol specifically forbids evacuation in the event of a breach. I have spent my whole life in service of this community, and I will not stand here and watch them die for some project protocol. Now get to your shovel. We can argue about this nonsense in court, assuming we both live to discuss your precious protocols. Very well, sir. After we light up this first guy, we're going to curve around to the uh, south and pick up this power node, grab this body, and toss it at the scanner. Actually toss it at the uh, regenerator here to knock him over, and uh, then stun him, dismember him while the door is unlocking. Multitasking, you know. Also make sure you stay away from this guy after you blow him up. Don't be like I did and just like run by him. So there's some boogers around the corner and also this guy. He's strong. I use the alt fire to get rid of the uh, boogers before taking out the next guy. Because I can just uh, get rid of him with the... Uh, I can just get rid of him with the... Um, with the primary fire afterwards, because he'll be stunned. So it goes, uh, Infector, Super Necromorph, Infector, Super Necromorph. And then the regenerator pops out of the vent behind us. So just get through the door as quickly as possible. Entering vacuum. This door is just going to uh, keep opening and closing these walls over here. You can hit them with stasis. I tried to do something over here to see if I couldn't uh, make it easier to kill the... Uh, the space balls over here because now that we don't have any more uh, explosive weapons we have no choice but to uh, snipe the space balls with our contact beam it's okay we got plenty of time just uh, just stay just stay calm just stay calm and focus on shooting the balls Also, it should be noted that the projectiles that the space balls shoot have a limited range. My recommendation for getting through these quickly is to just wait at the uh, at the one that is currently emitting a laser, so that whenever it, the laser turns off, the timing will be exactly enough for you to just pass right by. You don't have to worry about any lasers behind you hitting you either. This is the uh, final node door over here, and there's two power nodes in here, as well as a uh, ruby semiconductor. I can't see.
just like that, plasma pistol is almost fully uploaded. We're at the end over here, so we can just go ahead and get rid of the plasma pistol and just buy contact energy. Just completely fill it up with contact energy. This is it, Isaac. Convergence is almost here. Meet me at the marker. Once we uh, start chapter 15, there's going to be two leapers. We just gotta get rid of them immediately. And then up there, there's gonna be a spitter. And we're gonna blow the leg off of this uh, regenerator. Then there is a lurker up here. While we're opening the door here, we're going to. Uh, Hit these guys, get rid of them. As long as you don't take too long, then you'll be able to get out of this room without the regenerator uh, chasing you too closely. Chapter 15 is a very quick run and gun. So curve to the right here, there's gonna be uh, three enemies here. Once we cross over here, there's going to be another spitter around the corner. We just got to make sure that we keep the uh, regenerator in stasis. Be careful with this door over here, get ready to stasis. Because that leaper is already running at full speed. Then we can knock this guy down. After we go up this elevator, we can save the game. Alright, so once we uh, open the door here, we're going to... Uh Stun the uh, regenerator, knock out this fuse over here, and then knock out this fuse behind us. And then go through this door to reach the final boss. The research in that marker is worth every life we just lost! Yeah, you can use alt fire on him. I think I ain't used a javelin before, bitch. Thank you, Isaac. Now, time to die. What? Yours is the last body you need to be reborn. The Makers must be absorbed. The Makers? You mean me? But Strauss said we could destroy the marker! Not if we consume you first! God damn it, I trusted you! 
So every two shots, uh, every two shots from the uh, contact beam's primary will cause uh, Nicole to disappear, and then the uh, core of the marker will appear, and also the children will disappear. But uh, recommended to use the alt fire instead because the alt fire actually does damage Nicole. Three alt fires should do the trick. And it takes about uh, maybe seven or eight charge shots from the contact beam to destroy the core. And that's Dead Space 2, no damage on Zealot. Was this your great plan? Dump me off and die? Yeah, well, here's another one. I'm crashing through the roof to get you. Now move your ass. Wait, no, Ellie, Ellie, it's too late. You said you're at the station. Yeah, well, you don't really have a say this time. Heads up. Just kidding, there's a QTE sequence. that I captured that face glitch at the end though. It's pretty good. Anyways, if you uh, enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out my other no damage runs on my YouTube channel. I have also done a no damage run of Dead Space 1 and a couple of no damage runs of the Callista protocol. I will be doing Dead Space 1 remake whenever that drops. I wrapped up the uh, commentary recording as of uh, January 25th and Dead Space 1 remake comes out on the 27th. 
But it's uh, highly doubtful that I'll have a no damage run of that ready for at least a week. Just stay tuned for it. Also follow my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. I think before I do a Dead Space 1 no damage run for YouTube, I will at least upload my casual playthrough. Just to kind of tie you guys over. But uh, I'll be streaming no damage segments of uh, Dead Space 1 Remake on my Twitch channel. Once again, the address is twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. The link is in the description. Also join my community at uh, discord.gg slash carcinogensda. That's where all the cool kids hang out. If I may peer pressure you into also being a cool kid. But if I'm uh, gonna peer pressure you into being a really, really cool kid, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash carcinogensda. Any contribution is greatly appreciated. Never necessary, but always greatly appreciated, so thank you. Right, so see you guys next video, whenever that is. Within like about a week from uh, whenever this video drops. Until next time.
The other side will have to pick up the pieces. 